after 7 and um, we have a quorum and first uh, order of business is a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Happy New Year, everybody. This is our first meeting in 2018. Happy New Year. Year 2018. And I Adam hope it's going to be a good year. Um, so the first order of business after the pledge is approval of the Board of Education meeting minutes. Um, you may remember at the last meeting we um, we we punted on pass it on approval of the uh, November 15th meeting minutes, and we now have the minutes from December. 13th, so I'd entertain a motion on the first one. Melissa? Second. Second by Tracy. Any discussion? Um, I noticed on the meetings, on the minutes for November 15th, that we did in fact add uh, meeting dates in the summertime, uh, June, July, and August. Uh, but those dates do not show up on the board uh, on the online calendar. Which leads me to wonder whether they were forwarded to the town correctly in, as part of our uh, required submission of uh, meeting dates. Oh. Mm -hmm. Do we do we know that we? Some, I, yes. They, okay. They so the proper was submitted to the town. They so the the June, July, and, and August, August dates. dates. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they're just missing from the website. Yeah, we have some web website issues that we're trying to resolve and get the board section updated. Okay. That's all right. And the other the other comment was on the uh, December um, minutes. It says that we approve the minutes from November fifteenth, but we later rescinded that approval. So I'm not so sure that the minutes should show that we approved Good. something that we later rescinded. Correct. So um, should we? Uh, uh, so, so I think it's appropriate to correct the minutes right. for. December to eliminate the line saying we approved the minutes from November 15th. I agree. Any other changes to the minutes? Additions? Edits? Okay. Uh, all those in favor? As amended. As amended. Correct. As amended. Any opposed? No opposed. They passed. So. Thank you. They've been approved. And now we are on to um, public comment, and we have Mr. Torres here with us this evening, and he signed up to speak with us. A uh, happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. Thank you. I'm here to clarify things that were said on the October 11th board meeting after I left the board meeting about the Barrow Stem Lottery and my son Israel Torres Jr and how the lottery happened in the way it was explained here. On December the 7th, 2016, my wife applied for the, for the Barrow STEM lottery and we received an email with an application ID confirmation that we applied. On January 10th, 2017, we received an email about applications being open, which we already applied a month prior. March 15, 2017, we received a letter about the lottery schedule with an ID number. March 29th, the day of the lottery, which I myself attended the lottery. Um, the way the lottery works, where, when it happened, when I came to the lottery, you have an ID number, they start, they start from eighth grade all the way to kindergarten. So I was there for three hours. When um, they put my list out for the kindergarten list, my ID number was there. The ID number that we received at home, when we fill out the application and everything. I took a picture on, of the ID number. And I have a, a 33 page binder, which I handed out before to everybody that was here, but you wasn't here. Mm -hmm. So I have one for you. And neither was Ms. Ray. Okay, I try to get one for you next board meeting. So I have everything on file, the way it works. After the board meetings, which I was there for like three hours, there's like 200 people there. Uh, the same day at night, 
they put all the lists online, which it was the, the, the un, unofficial list that Murphy talked about on the October the 11th. My brother, his wife, their daughter applied. Their friends, like four years ago, they also applied. A co-worker of mine, I know people that apply for the barrel stem. The same process I went through, the same process they went through. So I don't know what Murphy was saying about the unofficial list that my son was not selected. He was selected. I had an ID number, have all the papers. If you have time, I put my wife's phone number in the back and my number in the back. So whatever was said here, it was a lie. I been to, I went, I myself, my wife was works during the day, I work at night. So I went to the board meeting, I was there for three hours. Every list came out. Imagine, they, were, they started from eighth grade, in town, out of town. In town, out of town, waiting list. And the way they explained it to you, that's not the way it happened. And, and the way it's been happening for years. So on, on April 11th, that's when we received a call about using a preference twice which we already applied December 7th. The memo came out January 10th. We already had a confirmation ID, everything. Like she said that they made a mistake about not letting us know about using the preference twice. We already applied, we did everything the way we were supposed to do. So the way that, because I think they were explaining to you how it happened, whatever they said, that's not the way it happened. Mr. Torres, your, your three minutes is up. Is there anything you'd like to say to wrap up um, this evening briefly? No, I just And then have you can leave whatever you want to leave with us? Yes, I have this. This, this is plain to you when, when we received every email about the conference ID, um, the day of the lottery, I took a picture. Mm -hmm. the, when, when the district placed all the lists online, the, everything is here. All the emails we received, everything is in here. So if okay. you have time. Thank you, Mr. Torres. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. If you would like, I can share, make a copy and share it with Ms. Ray if that okay. would be helpful to you. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Um, no other people have signed up. Is there anybody in the audience that didn't sign up? Okay. So we're going to move on to reports from the superintendent. Thank you and happy New Year's to all of you. Uh, I would like to start with some recognition and celebration. Uh, the first recognition, I want to recognize the middle school. Um, there's no one here from the middle school, but I'd like to recognize them. Uh, we are part, the middle school is part of a program called Achieve 3000. That is a reading program that is uh, used across the country, in middle school across the country. And we receive an email telling us that our middle school, uh, Windham Center, Windham Middle School, was recognized, one, the National Read to Succeed contest from uh, Achieve 3000. So we expect to get some more information. It's based on the number of students reading, the number of texts that they read, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, we just received it that Window Middle School won the National Read to Succeed contest, a school-wide race toward accelerated literacy achievement. So let's give them a round of applause. That's um, wonderful. Yeah, so we'll get some more information about that. And, and who, who, who gave that to us? The Achieve 3000. Okay. That is a, is a reading program uh, that is used across the country uh, for reading, for middle school, grade 5 to 8. Um, some other recognition, and we want you to, to uh, thank, we have three students um, that participated in the National School Lunch Week, and uh, they were selected and received prizes. Yaden Carnales from Nanchak, uh, who attends Sweeney now. Jasmine Flores, who attended Wyndham, and Ismail Lintron, who attended Wyndham Center. So they did a great job, and they participated and won prizes in the National School Lunch Week. So these are students who want to congratulate them. Uh, great event, the high school winter concert on December 20th. We want to thank all board members that attended and staff that attended. What a great event that was presented. I'm not going to go through all of these for your reading, but those to mention a couple that are important. Uh, the uh, award of nights, award of excellence ceremony, <coughs> December 18th, well attended. Uh, lots of parents and, and board members that attended, but this time it was very a little bit different. That we had community awards for community members, Mr. Uh, Bill Powers, uh, uh, Mayor Dr. Galushi, and also the Willie Radio Station. So we want to thank them. Um, a great gift was given to Nurt Windham, a, a one that is very uh, valuable. Mr. Correa, Carlos Correa, is a parent of two uh, precious young daughters at Wyndham, near Wyndham, and he donated a high-quality guitar 
to use by the music teacher and the students. So we want to thank Mr. Correa very much so. Um, the Department of Community Engagement and Family Partnership of Wino, we want to thank them for their celebration, Three Kings Day celebration. We had 497 participants that attended. We had uh, Senator Murphy, Senator May Flexer, uh, uh, Representative uh, uh, Johnson, and it was so well attended. And definitely, we want to thank the Three Kings uh, that, that participated. Um, the Google Classroom. We just started our Google Classroom with our one-to-one -one Chrome initiative in sixth and ninth grade. And so I am very happy because um, we are in the Google Classroom. And when you go to all these great schools, they have Google Classroom. So we want to thank the people that are making this possible. We have a committee that is co-chaired by teachers and members. Uh, Mr. Brandon O'Neill is co-chair. And Mrs. Katie, um, Katie, Kedaski, Kerry Kedaski is the other co-chair, and we have several teachers from the middle school and ninth grade, and so they move in this initiative. They are the committee. They're working on the plan. They're working on PD. They're having another PD on the 23rd. Uh, they're very excited, and so are the kids. They're very excited. Ready to receive call from parents that are excited that their kids have, uh, particularly in the sixth grade, the Chromebook. So we want to uh, congratulate them. There's some information about the budget process. Um, we already finished all the meetings with all the principals and all the departments uh, presenting their, um, I think Tracy is the only one that, uh, that the younger, that it was still working and getting higher budget, uh, but all the other departments presented their budget, and we want to let you know that we'll have the first community forum budget forum on the 17th at 5.30 here at the high school. Then we have a workshop on the 31st, and then we have another community forum uh, on March 1st, and I believe February 21st, uh, budget workshop on community forum. So, uh, Dr. Garcia, can you tell our new members and refresh it for me because I don't remember. The 31st is a, a board meeting technically. It's a budget workshop. Um, and the 17th, it's a workshop. It's a, it's a the 17th is a public forum. Yeah. So the, the workshop is for board members. Yes. And the public forum is for, for everybody, including yeah. board members. So, so in the budget forum, what happens is that people come and speak about what they would like to see remain in the budget, what initiative they would like to see, uh, what like need to go in the parking lot. So it's basically here the vision of the school district, here are the priorities, what priorities do you support, and so that's the conversation. And the budget workshop is where the board will present to the board costs, the cost of transportation, the cost of special ed, uh, the cost of uh, salaries and benefits, retirement, et cetera, et cetera. And so we work with the board with where are the increases and where are the decreases. And I believe last year we did give the community opportunity, a couple minutes, 15 or 30 minutes to ask question at the end of the workshop. Dr. Murphy, do you remember who gave them opportunity? I don't remember who gave them opportunity to ask question at the end of the workshop. Well, the workshop are open to the public and anyone can come to the workshop. May I ask another question? Sure. The, sure. the 31st, what time? Um, I don't know the exact time, Mrs. Lambert. They're usually after 5.30 um, or 7. I don't remember the workshop. I don't know. For the budget workshop. Well, it's, it's just um, rescheduled that it's better than the first one is going to be on the 16th, not the 17th. No, what? So it's, it's Tuesday evening is the first budget forum. It's the 16th. The 16th. Uh, yeah, I haven't confused. It's the 16th. The one for the public. Yeah. Open to the public. Actually, right. the then they're all open to the public. But right. You're right. It's Tuesday the 16th. I don't know why I'm saying the 17th because I was always the 17th in my mind. It's Tuesday the 16th at 5.30 okay. here at the high school, the All first right. one. Right. What time is the workshop at? Because that's the one that the board the members are supposed to be at, and I have to make sure that I can get here. Um, I think that one is scheduled at 7, Margaret. I don't remember. We have to look can you let us know tomorrow? Yeah. Definitely. Okay. And then the 21st on here is another one, but that's also our Board of Ed retreat. Okay, so so tomorrow can we get a revised schedule with the actual date? I just need to make sure I can get out of work on time right. and stuff like yeah. that. And there's so not we'll swim meets yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. If there's yeah. a swim meet, I'll let you know I'll be late. Yeah. But right. I, I just want to make sure there's no conflict because the 21st, if we're starting early for a Board of Ed retreat, I don't know that I can get here that much earlier. So, so I should have budget. I, my apologies, Mrs. Lambert. I okay. should pick up that the board retreat is the 21st, so we can't have a board workshop on the 21st. So right. I should have pick up that. Right. But for sure, uh, secure the 16th, choose of the 16th is the first community budget forum and that's at 5 30 here in the media center here in the bank and then 31st there's something and you'll let us know yeah, what time tomorrow okay and so thank i you. think it would be helpful if we could get these dates into the calendar online yes okay 
you know, we go back and look at the numbers. I, I just listened to this discussion and I still have a hard time remembering it. It'll be much easier if I can look at well, it. Well, I glanced over them when the I calendar. went through the board packet, but now that I'm looking at my calendar, I'm like, okay, the 17th, the 16th, the 31st, I need times to make sure that I can yeah. it. So we have it. We have it schedule. We first should have the, the dates and the times yeah. we and all, the places. We all need times. So we have it scheduled the 17th, the 1st, but what happened is that Barris also wanted to have the open house, so then we move ours to the 16th. Okay. So in my head, in my mind, I'm still talking about the 17th, but it's the 16th. Okay, so for the members of the public that are listening to this confusing conversation, <laughs> it will be posted online as yeah. soon as we possibly can. But the, the most immediate yeah. one is on the 16th at 5.30 yeah. p.m. of the 16th of January at 5.30 p.m. here at the high school. Media center. Media center. <laughs> right here yeah. in and, this room. Yeah. And so, uh, Janet, let's go and change it also on the budget calendar, Chris, because I know I'm getting my information from the budget calendar. So we're going to change that up there. Okay. And and just might I ask that, you know, uh, for Ilda's, for some of our work schedules, I know Melissa with the coaching and, 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 and Ilda with her schedule and me commuting, um, it's, it's really impossible to have meetings that many board members can attend um, as early as 530 in the evening. Uh, 6.30 or after yeah. would be much better for, for us. The, bu the budget workshop are at 7 o'clock. The last okay. year they were at 7. The budget Thank workshop you. were at 7 last year. Thank you. The, uh, this one at 5.30 is because there's another event taking place and we want to combine both of them. You want to capitalize, capitalize on, on it. Capitalize on it, right. That's why we, there will be some uh, members of the community here and so we want to capitalize on, on that opportunity. Okay. Actually, the Latino parents are meeting uh, that day and so because we know we have a group of parents meeting here, we want to just capitalize That's on great. it. That's great. That one is on the calendar. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. So the Kramer move, those for your information, here is the, 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 I don't want to call the tentative timeline, but the one that we're currently following for the move. Um, we will be putting some information out to the public by the end of this week or beginning of next week, <coughs> communicating to the public and to the staff and to the community what departments are moving, where they're located, how to get there. Uh, I believe Mr. Uh, Pavon, Special Education, Public Services, and Community Partnership are moving at the end of this week. And so we will be putting something out to the public, uh, telling them where they're located. The phone numbers are not changing, so that's the good thing. Uh, but our communication will go out and let people know. Is there a thought of, of putting a sign on the front door of the Kramer building? <laughs> That so that when people come up and they think they're going to go see Mr. Pabon, for example, that uh, they, it says that that office, you know, which offices have moved as they're moving. That makes sense. That yeah. Outgoing voicemails too. Like yeah. if somebody doesn't get you at your office, you know, just to let you know, we've now moved to High Street, blah blah blah, um, and maybe signage out front. Yeah. Because they're going to be coming in the side entrance. Yes. They be coming. No front entrance. Margaret has a whole plan of how she plan to. Put that oh, okay. out to communicate, but Margaret has a whole plan. And actually, I heard Margaret and Janet today preparing something for Friday about how they are going to be able to communicate that. And also, Eric downstairs is the is the receptionist downstairs. Mm -hmm. So he has been already informed that he will have a little a little brochure telling people where to go, et cetera, et cetera, greeting people when they come in. Well, I know the high school front office over often gets overwhelmed, and if people are confused, yeah. we need to make sure that that's well staffed for this kind of interim right here. So I'm more concerned about the coming through the front of the high school, and the high school people have to tell them, okay, you have to go around. I think I'm more concerned about that than them going to Kramer, because Eric is right there, and so Eric will receive them and tell them. But the high school, they can get a lot of traffic if people are coming up front. Well, until the ground thaws, can we get like a sandwich board that has arrows that point like okay. special ed, da da da, this sure. way, sure. main office? Not that they're supposed to definitely. go right when they come in that entrance, anyways. Sure. <laughs> Let's get Wayne to put the. Uh, I want to get Wayne to do something like that to put some signs, okay? Spanish and English, I'm assuming you're the, on top of that. I'm not that. <laughs> Spanish, English, and <laughs> Spanish, English, and German. Yep. <laughs> German, too. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. For Chris and I. Okay. Okay. Um, Barrow's Lottery, some information um, uh, about the advertisement of Barrow's Lottery that started yesterday, on uh, Tuesday, I'm sorry, on the 8th, and the process that we use them for uh, advertising in Spanish and also in English, flyers, um, uh, online, um, different this time, a, a very important feature this time is that we will have centers. Uh, four different center, one at East Gun, Kramer Building, Salvation Army, Wyndham Heights, where people can come 
to apply for the Veras Ladder and there will be someone there to help them. Because we're making the process more online, so we have in centers with time open and there will be someone at the center to help them apply at these different locations. Uh, EastCon, like I said, Kramer Building, Salvation Army, and Wyndham Heights. So I'm not going to go over all this information there. And in the weekly packet, I did give you some information about uh, the benefits of EastCon conducting this process from application, notification, and, 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 and the lottery process. Dr. Garcia? Yeah. Um, uh, I know that uh, Ms. Lambert had a question about the. About I'm just the wondering contract. where the funding came from this. Um, it was a sizable amount of money, and I'm wondering, it wasn't in last year's operating budget as far as I could find. So I'm wondering where $20,000 came from that we found to. And I think that, especially with the move of central office right now and the chaos that's going on, this is probably our best bet this year. I'm not positive this is the best use of such a substantial amount of money but I'm concerned about where this money's come from we haven't seen a budget transfer that I know of yeah. um, because for we, have not paid for, we have not paid for this yet well we still have to yeah, yeah we know we have to pay that free yeah even, even if we haven't made the transfer yet we still have to pay for it and I don't know where those funds are coming so from. there's a position in center office that I did not fill uh, that somebody resigned and I have not filled that position for the rest of the year at uh, that salary so there are some remaining of that that salary and I will take that to make this to pay this for this. Can we get an update then when we do our budget timeline, our budget process, whatever, of positions that didn't get filled and the, the financial dollars that go along with that? So I don't want the perception to be, and I've heard it from some people out there, and I hate those people that say, I've talked to lots of people and I've heard, but I've heard from some people out there, you know, did it come out of the slush fund? And we don't keep a slush fund. We're not allowed to keep a right. slush fund. So I, and I'm sure you've heard this too, Lynn, going, you know, being on right. the board of finance that, you know, oh, the board of ed, you know, pads their budget and has a ton of extra money. But when we do things like this, it appears that we can find $20,000, which is one of the reasons that I asked. So, um, so you're right, and I thank you. I thank you for explaining to people that we don't have a slush fund. It's very sad that they start from that negative framework. Um, um, we do not have that deficit framework. So I thank you for explaining to them. Uh, during the budget workshop, those are one of the things that we address. Uh, Chris and I address uh, salaries, wages, position filled, position not filled, uh, where we're getting money from, the grants decreasing of the grant, increasing. So those are all addressed during uh, the budget workshop. So we will be happy to share. Actually, today we're working on the grants, on the increasing. So we address grants, what we're getting, what we're not getting compared to last year. We address increase of staff, decrease of staff. All of that is handled during the budget workshop. Okay, just and an I explanation of, you know, a staff that wasn't central yeah. office position, what it is for the board, for our, our mm -hmm. budget workshops. It doesn't necessarily have to be part of the whole public thing because they may not want to know that or, or understand all of that. But um, but just, you know, so we know that we didn't fill six positions, which left us with an extra this much. But next year we have to fill them. We're not intending on filling them. They're not coming in the budget. They're staying in the budget so we can make those comparisons. Kind of like crossing things out when we do yeah. policy changes and stuff like that, showing us exactly where it's coming from. So, mm -hmm. and, I, and I think um, every year we get better with the budget process. Yeah, the budget we have. Now yeah. Now includes a lot of staffing yeah. information. Yeah. So it has both certified staff. And, and non-certified staff. Staffing, yeah. total staffing. Yeah. In the back, and it's multi-year kind of a look so you can see or headcounts going up and down. And and also for school and for department, we Perfect. do have that. And yeah. The and then yeah. the total amount that's attached the end, to that. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, so I think we, I'm very confident and feel very confident that we have a much better uh, rigorous budget process than when we, I came here in 2000. Yes, and, it's at least with headcount, yeah. we're much more. Yeah. We didn't include that before last year. Yeah. I'm going to continue. So. Do you have a question yeah. here or I, a comment? Well, I think it might be useful for people to understand that. <clears throat> The total budget is around $60 million. And the budget that we put together in the spring and that the voters vote on is a forecast that essentially says what we intend to do with every penny of the $60,000, but nobody is a perfect forecaster. Uh, people resign when you didn't expect them to. It may take a month or two to hire them. So some positions during the year, or near, you know, we've got 1,000 employees roughly. Uh, it's not unusual that some positions are going to be vacant for a month or two. When they're not vacant, we don't have to pay people. And as a result, it becomes possible to move some money around within the budget. It's a perfectly good question to right. say where did yeah. the money come from. But the idea that you, can, that you ought to be able to find $20,000 in a $60 million budget, sure you can find $20,000. I mean, that's a small fraction of $60 million. Uh, it's a good question to ask, okay, so where did you find it? And 
I can remember a famous senator years ago talking about the federal budget, a billion here, a billion there, pretty soon you're talking about real money. So in our case, 10 or $20,000 here, 10 or $20,000 there, yes, it will add up after a while. But uh, in any specific instance, uh, if it's necessary to find $20,000, it's possible to find it. Yes, it is. And I think that the, the questions that are being asked today and what Mr. Johnson, Johnson has assured us we'll be hearing about in more detail when we go through the budget workshops will help us as Board of Ed members when we're speaking with the community and talking to people on other boards, in, you know, that we will be better equipped to be able to answer those questions about yeah. where that money is coming from. If I may, um, I did not put it in my weekly, but if I may, you're welcome to send us to send me questions or thoughts that you have about the budget, things that you think you want to know, even if you don't have the precise question. So I would like to know about, I don't know, buses, for example, or something, or special ed buses or pre-K buses. That helps us a lot when Mr. Johnson and I meet to develop our outline of what to present to you. So feel free, feel free to email me whatever question you have, and that will help move the presentation much much uh, farther and to answer your to answer your question but I think you want to be pleased um, with more information that we every year we add more and more information uh, to the budget process uh, and we also making sure for example that HR for example is much more intertwined with the process they have a better system now have given us the information of who is on board where they're located what department uh, what grade level what are they making uh, years ago, it was very difficult to get that information, but over the years, we have been able to fine-tune the processes and the department and make things much I think, easier for us. Thank so you. So we welcome your question, your concern. They'll send us an email, and that will definitely help us. And I do want, okay, so that's it. Uh, Compañeros Ladder, again, some information again. Uh, their session will be conducted also the open house on January 17, much smaller scale uh, of the Compañeros Lottery than the uh, than the Bayros Lottery, and here's the information of their open house. The District Colander, I want to thank the District Colander Committee. Here are their names. We have people from all the different departments in the different col District Colander, from secretaries to union presidents to administrators and to teachers. So what you have there is, I would want to say, a tentative calendar uh, for your review. Uh, between now and the business meeting in February, you may see some minor revision as we continue to speak with people about the calendar there will be some minor revision but you will be informed of those revisions before you come to vote on, on the calendar so um, the calendar was done a couple session and it's a, uh, taking in consideration the regional calendar also but again i do know that there will be some minor revision to this calendar nothing that impacts starting and ending date of the calendar nothing major uh, all that will impact the entire school district, but I will make sure that you get that information. And, and when do we vote on that normally? The next business meeting in okay. February. Okay. So you do have some time to, to get information. And also you have for your first reading, it says here uh, that the Board of Education approved the revised policy. Uh, please uh, forgive us, it's not, um, this is not the homeless policy, it's not for approval, it's for your first reading. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's it, Madam Chair. Any questions? No. Okay. Uh, hearing none, we'll move on to committee reports. Um, is there anything to report from the Finance and Audit Committee? I know we've had holiday time and breaks since ensued between. Yeah. But anything new? Yeah. Well, we scheduled a, a meeting before. Our next board, I think it's the next, uh, next Wednesday. I think it's the finance and audit. 24th? I thought it was before a board meeting. Oh, it's, I, it's, it's the 17th. Yep, you're right. It's next Wednesday. It's, it's the 17th. 17th. Okay. At what yeah. time? Um, we don't have a BOE meeting next it, Wednesday. It's going to, I, I believe we're planning to schedule We're going to have it at, the, it's in, I think it says 6 o'clock on the, uh, on okay. the uh, on the calendar, yeah. okay, and that's uh, on the web calendar, and that's fine with me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, and the agenda will be to review the budget process and look at, at, at to 
documents on where we are with the reports that have already been sent in and make sure that things are on track and yeah that we that we pick up whatever questions folks might have as quickly as possible rather than having them pop up at the end of the process as they sometimes do okay thank you anybody's welcome to attend that if they want to go hear more about that and uh, school planning and design committee uh, Paul Palasian is not here today but Tracy is on that committee is there anything you want to report we meet tomorrow night tomorrow at night. six o'clock at the Kramer conference room uh, I, sp I spoke to Mr. Collegian this evening. He will be attending tomorrow night. Thank you for that clarification. Um, the policy committee, um, Melissa, you're, you and Ilda are both on the uh, committee. Are yeah. you guys planning a meeting soon? Um, our next meeting is the 25th, fourth Thursday, we should meet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the Those are now at 5.30. Our last meeting, we just talked about the homeless uh, policy with the changes that Mr. Stover suggested. Okay. May I ask a question? Yes. Can I request that somebody on the policy committee takes a look at the policy for staff to be able to drive students to places? Um, the, the Germany trip, which isn't on the agenda um, and happens next month, so we haven't approved it, but it happens next month. The Germans are have already bought their tickets, so they're on their way. Um, so do we need to add that to the agenda? We don't as have an any information item? about it, and I didn't okay. realize it until I, I just thought of it now when I was thinking about the... Um, okay. Anyways, we have to go pick the students up at the airport, and staff can't drive, so the person who's coordinating this is not able to drive to pick up the students. We have a staff member who has a, a certification on her license or something who can, but going forward, I know for various teams and stuff like that when there are small groups that have to go to an athletic event or something like that often the district rents a bus or a van and the, the coach drives mm -hmm. so I'm not sure how and sometimes the coaches are staff and sometimes they're not I'm not sure how the disconnect is there between a coach being able to drive but a different staff member not being able to drive when the students went to Spain a few years ago we had to rent a, a bus which had an expense to it and there's no line item for either of these trips the Germany or the Spanish one so we have no real budget other than what the parents pay mm -hmm. and it starts to become a hardship because while they're here we pay for all the events they go to for our sons or daughters and our exchange students so I, I Andrew's going on the German exchange so I'm going through this right now but so there's no budget for that so I'm wondering if there's a way to amend the policy to make it and I know insurance will pay a, f a factor in this as well but to amend the insurance to make it so a staff member could drive or to clarify why athletic coaches and band directors and stuff like that could drive students but in this case a staff member can't I don't know where the disconnect is I haven't really looked too in depth at the policy I glanced over it and so I don't know if the disconnect let's bring the policy up we do have a policy the board not too long ago approved that policy I actually we work in that uh, not too long ago because for, for how many years ago I think it was a year ago. a year ago so the board did approve right that, we the policy. At it. Um, so we can bring it back to see what is the, the question mm -hmm. um, I rem you know what I, I can't drive uh, the uh, school cars either and the thing is because I'm not on whatever list they need to be so I can't drive so I have to drive they have to drive me if I use any vehicle from the district so I think we can look into that definitely okay. let's bring it back I see both the, I saw both the members write this yeah. down so yeah. I yeah. can uh, email one and yeah. ask him to put on yeah. the next okay. agenda I just I want to make a clarification I don't want to penalize coaches because certainly yeah. I know like on the swim team and and <laughs> mrs. Lassard's husband coaches for the swim team I'm not trying to put her in an awkward position but when we go to ECC's there's 18 kids on the team and four or five of those are divers so they rent a 15 passenger van to take the swimmers to ECC's instead of a full bus yeah or you know if it's late or if it's on the weekend it saves the district money in the long run too I, I'd like them to still be able to do that I don't want them to lose that privilege but I don't understand why a German exchange coach okay. or you know advisor or whatever couldn't drive to Boston to pick well, up kids. Who said they couldn't do well, that? Well, there was there was a miscommunication at any point, so I just want to make sure it's clarified okay. going we'll forward because the policy and see what it is. Right, okay. okay. the okay. students are come students are going there in April, but the ones that are coming here in February, there's already been arrangements made. But I know there's a Spanish trip on the horizon that we okay. approved as well. So okay, okay, we thank you that. for bringing that mm -hmm. up. We will check into it. Yeah. Yeah. Executive committee is um, going, we're trying to get a meeting scheduled. Uh, there were some scheduling conflicts for the meeting that was supposed to happen tomorrow evening. 
And at this point, I believe, Janet, we're looking at the 24th. Yeah, we're looking at 24th. Yes. Right. So once we get confirmation, um, I will let the rest of you know. I know there's been some interest in uh, knowing when that meeting is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so uh, I wanted to put on the agenda, and I actually had uh, mentioned this earlier. Um, I'm always interested as the new chair in hearing from members of the board, particularly people who have been on the board longer, um, about, you know, things that you think that we need to revisit <coughs> or bring up for more discussion. And newer board members, um, we all may have different ideas about about things so uh, I was curious this evening whether or not any of you wanted to offer any topics that you would like to have um, considered have have us give consideration to putting on a future Board of Ed regular meeting or uh, workshop topics anything that comes to mind that any of you want to share this evening I think yes. the only thing that was uh can you pull your mic closer? Yeah. Just, uh, <laughs> you've got a soft away. voice, and I pushed it away because it was picking up everything, like the yeah. tapping of the pen well, and everything. So. <laughs> anyway, um, the only thing that I was interested in was revisiting the public comment policy, and yes. that's something that the policy committee is going to look at at the end of January. So, so you will be coming to us for some recommendations on that. Yes. Then. Okay. Yep. Wonderful. Are we getting SAT and PSAT data at the board retreat? Because we yes. haven't gotten it yet. He's on the so, board retreat. Okay. Thank okay. you. I wasn't thinking about it until yeah. just right now when you yeah. asked. Yeah. <laughs> on the board retreat. So the top thing on my mind is, the, let's see, I can't, I can't remember whether it's Sweeney or Wyndham Center that was, that's been the longest since renovation. One of them was renovated in 64 and the other one was renovated in 68. So both of them are 50 years or more since they were renovated. Uh, North Wyndham School was last renovated in 1986. Um, and if we get around to, if we, if we do undertake renovating those buildings, by the time we're done, the middle school will have arrived at uh, more than 30 years old probably. So um, our uh, facilities plan that we put together some years ago is, has become dated, I think. And it would be a good idea. I think planning and design is already starting to think about uh, <laughs> doing a needs assessment, which I will then, and that's the place that should start, bring it mm -hmm. to the board. But we do need to take a look at our facilities plan. Uh, it's wonderful that we're going to renovate the high school, uh, but we've got uh, uh, um, obsolete facilities at, at the K to 8 level as well, and we need to. Uh, you know, start moving on those topics. Uh, the other thing kind of that's on my mind that sort of falls out of what Mrs. Lambert just brought up is I'm still concerned about the, the number of tests, standardized or otherwise, uh, and assessments that our students are required to take, uh, along with midterm exams or final exams. So the, the number of times that it's put your books away and pull out a pencil and answer the following questions. I, I think we need to look at the schedule and how much of that goes on and see if we can't um, reduce the amount of time that's spent testing and increase the amount of time that's spent teaching. So are you suggesting that that might be a, a workshop topic uh, to get that I, information? I think, yes, it would because discussion. we'd have to get the staff to essentially right. give us a layout on, on the kinds of tests that are being done. We've got and they're not the same at elementary and middle and high school so that you know it's the amount of testing that's done and the kind of testing that's done varies by how old the children are and then the schedules so mm -hmm. I, I think we really need to understand what's going on there and and then ask ourselves uh, whether or not so I I suspect that some of it's redundant okay well I, I will confer with the superintendent and the staff and we'll figure out when we can get the kind of information that we need in order to get a presentation and then open it up for some discussion yeah, and deliberation on the board's part. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we start we start talking with some faculty from the high school about midterm and what we're hearing from teachers is that no midterm is obsolete for them. It doesn't 
it's not aligned to anything. So we have we start having that conversation right now. Okay, so that that's a good topic, uh, and and uh, the facilities plan update uh, will take the will assume that the plan building plan and design building <laughs> committee will begin that discussion mm -hmm. soon, and uh, I'm yep. sure that uh, if if not, then we'll figure out a way well, to. That's where it should come from. Yes. But we we should Kick that we should we should sort of plan on having it. Well, it's helpful. It's helpful for board members to have a sense of, of where we are with that. I know <coughs> some people may be tired of hearing me say this, but when when we did have a tri board on um, this issue earlier on, uh, when I was on the board of selectmen, it was representatives from the three boards, and we actually did. Um, it was very good because it involved elected leaders from the other boards having a better understanding of what was up with the facilities and we did take several months and uh, with the principal of each school and um, you know the Wayne Donaldson equivalent uh, that group actually did tours of all the school buildings in town um, and it was very enlightening for people on the other boards who didn't understand uh, what was up in the schools as far as the facility maintenance and um, and space constraints and the kind of um, circumstances that uh, teachers and social workers and other people were working in so um, it might be worth uh, thinking about when might be a good time to do that kind of thing again just want to put that on the table At, I mean that was literally like 10 or 12 years ago that that happened. Did they go to Nightshot? They went to Nightshot? We went to every building. <laughs> uh, it, 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 not, not in one fell swoop, and like over a course of a couple of months. Like we'd schedule, uh, you know, this evening we're going to go to North Wyndham School, and the principal and the facilities people were prepared to give us what was a relevant tour of that. Not just walking down the hallways and looking in the classrooms, but looking at the closet where somebody was um, having uh, meetings or you know or things like that so <laughs> so it was not just the it was not just like the roof leaking or whatever yeah. it was all those kinds yeah. of things or walking around Sweeney at the time and getting locked out you know when you're trying to go between the buildings in the in in the field you know in the yeah. yard and yeah, yeah. so anyway. rate no, I think that's the if we do a needs assessment and we understand what kinds of facilities we need to deliver the kind of educational programs that we should be delivering, then we can take a look at the facilities and, and their capacity to, uh, to meet those needs. And I think we'll find that there are lots of places where we don't have the capacity to do things that we ought to be doing. Uh, and then it certainly would be useful uh, to provide uh, tours and other uh, Open opportunities the public, for too. the public mm -hmm. uh, and other elected officials from other boards to to actually see and understand uh, <coughs> what the facilities are compared to what they need to be right anything else that people want to put <coughs> out there can, we get, can yep. we get an update I'm sure it'll come during the budget process too but maybe during the retreat or something like that about the influx of new students that have come into oh, the yeah. district mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. how that breaks down classroom wise do we have to add I'm sure it'll come during the budget process but it's something we might need to talk about um, during the retreat too actually I was saying something out on Friday we we have a report that we get every week of how many kids come to the district I think I used to send it before I don't know if yeah. days, where they're located what uh, what grade level so you can see what schools and what grade level so Janet actually I got it this today can we send it again on Friday thank okay. you thank you but I mean how yeah, it's but, but, affect but there was an yeah. issue at the, the last meeting classrooms if we need up. an extra fourth grade classroom at Sweeney or an not, extra not, not yeah yet. not yet right but, but we're headed in that yeah. direction and what kind of movement we've had to do among students where their home school might be Sweeney and we've sent them to Natchog or Windows <coughs> or so we have affected transportation a little bit um, uh, MNJ has been very helpful to us and work with us because we have to make some transportation adjustment per se speaking of transportation I'd like to congratulate you and, and mr. Rivers for solving <laughs> one problem in, in involving school children waiting on a corner uh, where they weren't visible to traffic because of snow piled up snow by snow plows. <laughs> so the, the question is to coordinate the, yeah. the, the, uh, the corner in which the snow plow leaves the snow 
uh, differently from where the school children are waiting for school buses and uh, and that's it's, it's nice to have gotten that just taken care of without a lot of discussion yeah. hullabaloo or press yeah uh, thank you for that but it's very it was very nice to work with mr rivers and that matter and uh, we agree in two minutes and we got done in obviously another two minutes so <laughs> <laughs> okay can we get him to get homeowners to plow their sidewalks <laughs> right <laughs> yes because oh, i didn't i'm sorry i didn't realize it until after the cold weather broke when i took my dogs for a walk but literally i am walking on quarry street as buses are flying right. by with my dogs if i get home when it's still light out in the afternoon mm -hmm. and for me who's a larger woman with a large dog it's not so much of an obstacle they see me coming but for a small sixth grader or seventh grader they could easily be Dwarf. overlooked yeah. and not seen. And some of those corners have a significant amount of snow, snow piled yeah. up and no way for to get out. So, And lots of either vacant homeowners or vacant landlords or whatever the case may be, homes that are in foreclosure or whatever, um, the sidewalks aren't plowed at all. So it's either walk through knee-high snow for some of these kids without adequate footwear in some cases or walk in the road. And yeah. Well, enforcement. Right. Having been on the town council, it's a big issue. Yeah. So, uh, oh, okay. anyway, I know I Peter Leeds wrote a letter to the Chronicle yeah. requesting that you know people clear their sidewalks and stuff like that. I think it's something we might want to consider advocating for as a board. Okay. Okay. And if a bank owns a home, then they should be responsible for the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Yes. If they're in foreclosure. If we can um, find people for parking in the wrong place, why can't we find them yeah, as exactly. the as the? Sometimes it's very, I will just say, it's very hard for the town to figure out who to contact or how to contact them. So, But they know it's going to snow. Uh, yeah, like, but, but they may be in Florida. Yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> that's what I'm saying, some of these owners. I'm not, I'm not making yeah. excuses. But, but they know the house is in Connecticut where I, it often snows. No, there. but <laughs> let me just tell you, it is, it is a nightmare for enforcement. And, but that does not mean we shouldn't say something about it. But th we must also remember there are neighborhoods with no sidewalks. Right, yeah. Like mine. Right. So, you know, kids are walking in the street no matter what. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. bus stops are in the street no matter what. So, um, let's move on to action items. And, and I'd like to make, uh, I'd like to ask for uh, an amendment to the agenda to add uh, item number C, which is uh, Path Academy contract um to the agenda could i get a motion on that i move that we add it to the agenda second, second motion's been made and seconded any discussion one hand went down to tracy mm -hmm. all those in favor all those in favor okay uh, okay that's added to the agenda as an item number c so uh first item of vision business a recommended approval of the revision of the board policy um, for Americans with Disabilities Act so moved motions been made I hear a second second, second. any discussion uh, this was in our packets pretty straightforward yep. all those in favor aye any opposed abstentions okay approved um, recommended approval of personnel recommendations move we approve the personnel recommendations in reference for second, second. Oh, go ahead Ilda's got it we'll give it to Ilda um, any discussion yet again we lose go. we lose to retirement some significant years in this school district mm -hmm. and that's always sad and I hope we're preparing for that in the future like getting postings out and stuff like that Mary rival was huge and she's been central office forever and Robin Steele and Sid Weldon taught my kids and probably taught your kids Lynn so those are huge losses to the district yes. but I wish them well any further discussion all those in favor okay the motions passed uh, now we're up pardon they're free to go. <laughs> Not till June. Not, Not till the end of school. Not till June. <laughs> item C. So item number C is the PATH Academy contract. And I'm going to turn this over to you, Dr. Garcia, to explain. Um, mm -hmm. This was, this was we were not able to get this before Friday. just this evening. Yeah, when we yeah. submitted the other packet. So, so thank you to, to the chair and to the board members for putting on the agenda. It would have been uh, our practice to put it on the 
packet on Friday, but we're not able to receive it. Um, is a is a very straightforward uh, contract with the PAC Academy. As you know, we've been discussing this partnership for quite some time. Um, we have spent some time working with them, uh, working with their leadership team. Uh, we believe that the program is going to be beneficial to our students. Definitely is going to meet the need of students that are uh, that we cannot meet the need in the traditional uh, school. I have to say the building is a beautiful building. Um, beautiful building, beautiful furniture, beautiful design, and uh, very, very, very uh, well complete for, for, for students. Um, the, the, the contract is a very 34 contract, as you've seen for the rest of the year, is only $30,000 uh, for the district, and that's very, very beneficial if we start looking at what home uh, tutorial and home bone instruction cost the district for students. In addition to that, we will have somebody um, we're supervising the program that is one of our employees. So students are, will be receiving uh, their reconstruction, receiving more uh, beneficial instruction to say, instead of uh, those being at somewhere receiving tutorial from someone. So not only is cost effective, but it's beneficial to the students and to the district. It's so, actually, so it's actually 60,000. 60,000. Yeah, but for the rest of the year is only it's prorated. This is the word they're prorated. No, no it's no. 60,000 from January 1st to June 30th. It's 100,000 for 10 months. Yeah. Yes, and equals um, it's it's ten thousand. Yeah, it was. It's basically ten thousand dollars a month. One hundred. It was a hundred for ten months, so it's sixty thousand for six months. Yeah, no, probably no, in six no, months no, made of sixty thousand. Before we before we can before we go on with this, can we get a motion on the floor? All right. So th this is a con as I understand it, this is a contract for uh, us to provide uh, alternative education yes. for students who've been okay. Per the presentations that have been yes. made, yeah, to, to to satisfy the state's law that we right. have a al alternative education for students who've been suspended or expelled, is that that's correct? Yes. Okay. So, so then the I, I think the appropriate motion is uh, I move that the board uh, accept the uh, contract with Path Academy uh, to uh, uh, provide for um, facility. To, uh, for alternative education of Wyndham High School students. Effective January 1st of yeah. this year? Yeah, effective January 1st, 2018. Do right? I get a second on that and then we can open it up for discussion? Second. I, um, I feel because I sit on the Wyndham Charter Corps Board of Directors as well that it's a conflict of interest for me to vote on this mm -hmm. and therefore I'm going to abstain from the rest of this conversation. Okay. Okay? Okay. Yeah, I, I just, yes. I feel like being on both boards, that's a conflict of interest to me. It doesn't come up very often, but in this case, I don't think I should vote on a contract. Okay. 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 So uh, I have yes. a quick question. So this contract is only for students who are suspended and expelled. But don't we already have students there? Yeah. Okay, so there are different types. There are students that go there is because they will draw from our public school and they go to Path Academy for overage on the credit, meaning they're overage, they don't have the credits, and they cannot graduate. So, so this $60,000 covers them we, too? Once they, once they disenroll with us and they enroll with PAP, they become PAP Academy okay. students. It does not cover that. Okay. Uh, this will cover our students that are suspended, expelled, or other students that we believe have tremendous behavior problems that are not successful in our school that can go to PAP Academy and become more successful. So say like we currently don't have any students who have behavioral issues and need to go there and Next month, we don't have any students over there. Do we still? Have to pay them? So uh, we would like to have that, Mrs. Lazar, <laughs> in the data that we have for the last, I guess, five, six years of the school district. Uh, we always have more than 50, okay. 20 students. That At what point the district had 32 students that were receiving homebound? Um, so um, we have. I have no doubt. Not on our radar. Not on our radar. <laughs> so, th so this dollar amount that we're paying, which would be ten thousand dollars a month for six months, for this contract, um, covers all of the students who fall into that category, regardless of how many there are. Well, we don't expect due to class environment. We're not going to send a hundred students over there to class environment. So we are looking at sending, uh, Miguel, we're looking at about 15, 20 students, up to 15. Up to 15 or maybe we can go beyond that. But you know, we, we ourselves want to make sure that we create an environment that is, because it's still our program, it will be with them, but we are still 
overseeing the program there. We will be visiting, we will be taking a look at how students are being successful. So we don't want to send 30 kids right. at one time. And so the other thing is that kids will be in and out because some kids will be suspended for two, three months, others will be suspended for a month, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so this contract provides for uh, services and furnishings, but who actually provides the teaching? It's a combination of both. Okay, so so in addition to the sixty thousand dollars, we're going to be paying staff. Who we actually, already have a staff over there that provide. We already have a staff over there. Before. Okay. Somebody on our payroll. Oh yes, goes yes, over there. yes. We already Who's have a staff there? over there. All right. Okay. And in addition to that, we we have hired a clinician. And so that clinician, that is our clinician, we've been providing some services over there too. All right, so as I recall, I don't recall the exact amount that we ended up with in the budget for alternative education last spring. It was a 200, 200, yeah. 200, 000, 200, 000, 200 100 and some thousand? Yeah. 200, we put 150 to 200,000 in the budget. Okay. 150 to 200,000. And how much of that have we already used in getting to January 1st? Officially and formally, none, because it was designed for this project, and we have not spent anything from that. Now, if you look at the students that are receiving homebound instruction, that comes out of another line item. But the, the money for this, that we have sent this line item, we'll be start with this. So we've got a hundred and some thousand dollars in the line item for the whole year, but this is 60000 Plus whatever we're so, spending for the staff people that are already over but there. We, but we do want to put some technology there, so we'll have some computers. So there are some other costs, Doctor. Okay. So we could give you that other cost. There were some other costs. We will not go over the 100. Well, I know, I know we're, uh, a, a, we have the budget already for this, so the budget's not, the, not so much a that question. That would not be an issue. So it's, uh, no. it's a sufficient amount of money in the budget to cover it. Oh, definitely. Okay. Now, what about administration? We don't have to provide. Yes. So we, we want we want because the state requires that we supervision. So we have an administrator that will be part time. Since the students are not going to be full time over there, because Path Academy students want to be there in the morning, and our students want to be in the afternoon. Okay. So we have an administrator that's already on site for us that will be there from twelve to four when the students are there. So this is somebody we're already. Oh yeah, we already have them. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it's not a new administrator, a new line item. Okay. Any other questions, comments, discussion that people would like to have? Yes, Hilda? question. Um, so, so what if we had more than 20 kids go there? Do we have to pay more than $10,000 a month? No, that will not happen. But I, but I will definitely have to have some conversation with them on how we accommodate the students, uh, you know, do we change schedules? Because we want to make sure that these students are in a small environment. And again, we're not having 50 teachers over there. So that possibility could happen, and that's when we have to come up and look at the administration and have conversation. So this program is not a program that's going to be there by itself, and nobody's supervising it or overseeing what is taking place in case something happened like that. They are still our students because they haven't they withdrawn students, from the district. Right, so right. we are responsible for them. Dr. Yes. Who, who is the administrator that's over there now on our behalf? That's going to be over there, and our behalf will be Katie Fur. Katie Fur. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? I have to say something crazy. So, <laughs> so now, <laughs> it's, it's just let like, us be the judge of it that. It doesn't make sense to me if we're just putting the students in a building if they're not providing anything for us at Path. No, 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 You're no. You're saying our no, teachers, no, no. our administrators. No, 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 no. Path is providing. Pat is providing the instruction to, okay. to those students. So, no, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a partnership, okay? Yeah, I didn't get that part. What are they providing for us? We're just using their building, and we have to cover a lot of insurance costs and stuff. And they have some other services, for example, the, the social and emotional services that uh, Dr. Vega is the director of their Google services. So they are providing a lot of different services. These students not only need academic, but they need a lot of other social and emotional it. Anything else? One last question. Go um, right ahead. No, we're doing our due diligence here. I'm trying to think of Katie first. Does she do teacher evaluation? Mm -hmm. So she's going to be part-time teacher evaluation, part-time right. at the academy. Yeah. So right now she's full-time teacher so, evaluation. So, so it, it's full-time, but teacher evaluation is one of those positions that is like, a, I will say, seasonal position. 
at the beginning of the school year, lots of work that needs to be done with getting teacher in the form of SLOs. But then after that is maybe the work diminishes drastically. No, I agree with yeah. you. I just I'm thinking we're not going to hire a new no 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 pick no. up her no, 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 part no. time administrator to do the other half no. of teacher evaluation. No, probably not at all. Okay. There, there's no need. There's no need to hire anyone to do teacher evaluation. Mm -hmm. Okay. And as you know, as a teacher, the state is really losing his interest in the teacher evaluation system. Popular a couple years ago. <laughs> it's a popular a couple years ago, and now it's like, we don't Okay, care. okay, okay. Well, we're not going to get sidetracked <laughs> on that topic. <laughs> but, uh, okay. um, this, so, this, this contract is limited to the use of space, however. I mean, uh, you know, the other discussion about how, how the teaching occurs is, is what we're going to do with the space once we've leased it. But this essentially is a... As a contract uh, to, to, to lease space. Yeah, and that had to because something I know you they're have to, building. Yes, something with I understand why we need this yeah. contract. Yeah. But the, the questions about uh, teaching, how much is ours, how much is theirs, how is it administered, are all outside of the scope of this particular document. Okay. Okay. Uh, hearing. Seeing no other questions or comments, and our silent partner over there can't weigh in. Um, <laughs> is there? Are we ready to vote on this? Okay. All those in favor of approving this agreement? Any opposed? Okay. No abstentions. Well, abstention. one, abstention. one abstention. One abstention. Yes. yes. Okay. So. I guess we've authorized you to enter into this contract. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, now we're on to public comment, if there's any. I think we've. I think we're out of public at the moment. I know. <laughs> I just always ask. Somebody could decide to be public, even if they're a staff. Um, okay. So now we're going to be going into executive session. For ratification uh, of contracts, I'll entertain move, a motion. Move we enter uh, executive session for a discussion of ratification of contracts. I second that. Now that I can talk again. Yes. <laughs> All those in favor? Okay, we're going into executive session. 